this episode of Fishing with P. Bess, we are going to talk about the trot shot. Ha <laughs> ha, let's go. Oh, I got him. All right. Hey folks, in this episode of Fishing with Bee Bass, we're going to talk about the drop shot. Hope you enjoy. about how do you set up a drop shot rig? What are the, the components to it? How do you set it up? How do you use it? First is you need a drop shot hook. The smaller hook you use, the better for the drop shot rig. Now, the second part of it is the little ball sinker that's on the bottom. Some people use you know, pyramid sinkers. Some people use split shot sinkers. I like using these little ball sinkers that I made especially for drop shotting because all you do is there's a little pinch right here. You slide your line in and just pull it up and then it's stuck on your line. You know, it, it cinches to your line. So let's say if you're fishing around brush, you're fishing around a lot of grass or something and it gets hung on a limb or gets hung in the grass. Uh, if you pull, pull it hard enough, instead of you're losing your whole drop shot rig, you just lose this little ball sinker right here. It's gonna save you a good amount of time if you have to retie, because tying a drop shot takes a couple moments. Not too long, but it, it does take some time. You get your drop shot hook. In my case, I'm using Gamagatsu size two drop shot hooks. The smaller hook you use, the better. I always stick with size two. I never go anything lower than a size two, because size two lets me get the job done. You put the line through the hook of the eye. Now make sure when you put the hook on, it's face down. It's going down towards the ground. Because if you do it the other way, it's gonna end up being upside down. All right, so the knot that you use for this uh, drop shot rig is called a Palomar knot, is the knot that I use. There's a couple other knots you can use called a, I think it's called a uni knot, I believe it's called but I use the Palomar knot. So the way you tie a Palomar knot, I'll go into it real quickly. I don't want to go into it super detail, but the way you tie a Palomar knot is you feed the line through and then you feed it back through the eye. So now you've created this loop right here, just like that. You've created this loop. Now, before you start tying it, make sure all your lines are not tangled or anything like that. See how there's a little bit of a tangle right there? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that. So I just grab it just like this with my hands and unwind it just like that. Now there's no tangle anywhere in that line. So I'm gonna work my hook all the way to the front part of where the tag end is up here. Tie a simple overhand knot. Stop it right about there. Tie a simple overhand knot. This part I like to use my teeth because my teeth, because I don't want it to get stuck on the hook point. So what I do is, as soon as I make the knot, I feed it through with my left pointer finger, and then I just take my teeth and just pull it through. All I've done so far is make a simple overhand knot. Now my next step is com the completing the Palomar knot. Now what I do next is very simple. You've got your loop right here. You haven't done anything with it. All you do is take it and put it over the hook just like that. All I did was take the loop and put it right over just like that. Now I grab my hook right here, covering the end here so it's not gonna come off, and then tighten it down. You know, be very careful when you're pulling this. Always wet it. I like to wet it right when it gets about right there, when everything's not even fully to the hook yet. And just pull it right down. Make sure everything goes right on the area. Make sure it looks good on the hook. And it does. Everything looks okay. All right. 
Now, the last part of setting up this rig is definitely one of the most important parts. Now, you got your polymer knot with your leader going down just like that. Now, before you put the ball sinker on, the drop shot sinker, take the end, take the tag end, this very long tag end right here that you've made, and feed it back through the eye of the hook going down. Just like that. If I don't put an overhand knot in it. All right. So what I've done is just I put the tag in back through the eye of the hook. Now what this does is it's going to ensure that the hook's going to stay upright. And it kind of puts pressure on the top where the knot is right here to where it's, it's going to stand out a little more instead of kind of falling down. Now, that's the hook right there. Now the ball sinker. Now weight on the ball sinker, normally I'll use a nice small one. Use the lightest weight you can use to get away with. Now if you're fishing deeper, you're going to want to use a little bit more heavier uh, ball sinker. Grab my weight and everything. And all I do is just pull it up. And you see, all it does, all you do is just slip it right up in there, and it just doesn't want to move. Now, I tie, you know, a couple extra overhand knots just, just to give that more secure that it won't come off. But if it does, it's not going to be the end of the world. Remember, bring out what you bring in to the environment. You, I don't want any, you don't want any fishing line or anything left in the water. Because if this gets caught around a fish or something, then that fish will not be able to swim and he dies. The Zoom finesse worms are amazing on drop shot rig. Uh, any type of a finesse worm, something a little bit smaller in profile. And then next, baits that are supposed to imitate like, you know, minnows or a little bit of shad or something like that, like a bait fish style profile. Also, the Gambler Shaky Shad works really good on drop shot rig. Also the Yum Mighty Worm 4 inch, they work also amazing on drop shot. Now another bait that I like to use on drop shot is a Zoom Super Fluke Junior. Now, I grab the hook, just like that. Now, instead of just nose hooking it, you know, that's just nose hooking it right there. Yes, that works, but I, I feel like I'm more tempted to lose baits like this if I just nose hook it. So what I do is something that's a little bit different. You know, not saying that more people do this. This is just what I do. This is what I found. I feed it through on the hook a good little ways, making sure that, you know, it's nice and straight in there. And then once it's more than about halfway on the hook, I slide it up just like that. So the bait's actually more embedded in the worm or whatever finesse bait or whatever drop shot bait you're using that time. So now see how it's not just nose hooked, it's actually a little, the hook's a little ways into the bait. I'm less liable to lose this bait now because it's got more bulk on the, on the hook. You still get the same presentation and it kind of sticks it out just a little bit more. Just a quick, you know, tip. Well, now let's talk about rod and reel selection. Probably about 80% of the time we're going to use a 7.6 medium action eight pound fluorocarbon spinning reel. Now, if I'm fishing a pond that's very, got a lot of stuff around it, you know, all kind of li limbs and stuff like that. If the pond's a little bit smaller, I actually go down a foot to a six, six medium action spinning rod. But normally the one I fish is a seven, six. Talked about our hooks, talked about sinkers. We talked about baits. We talked about how to rig it. You learn how to tie the Palomar knot. Now, let's go to the water and catch some fish. I hope. Let's do this.
I knew there was a fish. I knew there were fish right there. I saw, as soon as they came up, I saw, uh, I, I saw some bass feeding. I saw some bait fish running around on the surface. And so I got my Zoom Super Fluke, kind of twitched that around, didn't have any luck. So then I tried my finesse horn by Zoom. And look at that sucker right there. Nah, not too bad. So in this video, we went over how to fish the drop shot rig, how effective it can be for bass fishing. Well, as always, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel because there's going to be more fishing videos to come. Till next time, I will see you bassoon. And all these mosquitoes around me have a lot of pison in them, pison.